Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. It is Easter weekend. Happy Easter, he is risen. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend, able to celebrate it with family and friends. Um, we are keeping the chickens in the brooder a little bit longer. And the reason for that is we're gonna be in the 70s this weekend, but next week we've got some thunderstorms predicted and we are going down into the 30s at night. So for us, just being able to clean these out and uh, let these guys stay in here for an extra week. Right now, they're almost four weeks. So if they stay in a couple days extra over the four weeks is not that big of a deal. Um, to get them out a couple days early and risk losing a couple just is not worth the reward of getting them out for us. So we've cleaned both their beddings. I've got Uncle Ken here. You guys probably remember him from earlier videos. He's always coming down helping out and we love that he comes down and is able to help us out. So we're, we're getting to work with him this week. Um, got a lot of projects that we've been doing. We'll show you some of those today. But the biggest thing is we've got the chickens cleaned up. Um, they will be good. We're still using these uh, fine shavings, which I think are really good. Um, like I said, these guys will be four weeks um, this Tuesday. So they're just under four weeks old. You can see they're starting to feather out. Um, got a lot of people that do not like the Cornish cross. Once we get them outside, we're gonna talk about why we raise the Cornish cross and if we would try other breeds. So stay tuned for that video, but uh, they're staying in a couple more days. Like I said, the risk is not worth the reward. A couple more days in here, they'll be just fine. We're starting to turn off the heat lamps during the day. Um, we did have the moving blankets on top here. We've moved them back. So they're getting hardened off, used to a little bit cooler temperatures. Like I said, they're almost feathered out here. They're doing good. We had 131 birds from Valley Farms Hatchery. We've lost five and we're pretty, we're pretty happy with that number. You hate to lose any of them, but to only lose five for 131, that is awesome. So I'm gonna get one of these guys out here, get them up close to the camera so you all can check them out and uh, show you what these Cornish look like about four weeks old. All right, guys, here is our Cornish cross at four weeks old. Um, we do order all males. You can see that comb is starting to come in. Uh, a lot of people think they're ugly chickens. I agree, they're kind of ugly chickens, but these are not your normal egg laying breeds. These guys are power packed to grow delicious meat for everyone. So they don't fully feather out, but you can see they're starting, starting to feather out. Um, the warmer it is, the less feathers they grow. So they do have their feathers coming on four weeks old. We've got a nice little, little meatball here. So four more weeks, believe that or not, four more weeks, we'll be processing these guys, putting them in the freezer and selling at our market. So there is a look at a Cornish four weeks old. Can't wait to get them outside, but we're going to wait. Look at this too. You see this big old bulge right here? Do you see that? That is the chicken's crop. They eat a ton of feed and it packs in there and they use their gizzard to break down feed. Little chicken lesson for you. Chickens don't have teeth. They eat their stuff whole. It goes into their crop and their gizzard squeezes it and crushes it up. And that's how they eat their food. So there's our four week old Cornish. They will be out probably next week, but we're gonna wait till the 30, 30 degree weather is gone. So it is Easter. We've got some beautiful tulips, some beautiful flowering trees. We wanna go show you that. We do a lot of animals, but we don't talk about our plants and other things that we're growing very much. So let's go look at those really quick. All right, we've got Uncle Ken over there dumping the chicken manure onto the compost pile, cleaning up our old compost pile. We've moved its location. We're next to the farrowing barn there. So we moved it so we could use more area for the pigs when they go into farrowing. So it's on the front side of that fence now. He's taken from the old pile and adding to the new pile and then we'll flip that over. We don't do much with our compost as far as like turning it and checking heat. We just let nature do that for us. But we're on my mother-in-law's side and I'll show you some of these trees. Obviously they need trimmed. Um, this is a pear tree. Check out some of these pretty blooms going on though. We had some pears off this two years ago. Didn't get any last year. Over here, we've got some cherries. We harvested a bunch of cherries two years ago. Didn't get any last year again, but uh, looks like we might have some this year. So a couple apple trees we think are dead. Pretty sure they're dead. Another pear down there. So these were here when she bought the property 
and uh, so we've just been able to use whatever is grown there. So checking ours out over here, when we moved in, one of the first things we did was add fruit trees to our property. So we've got a couple apple trees. I think some of them are not doing too well. Um, obviously, I need to prune these things. I have not done that very well. Um, we've got an apple tree here that is still alive. Kind of weird, skinny tall tree. But the pretty ones down here are the peach trees. So look at these. We got a peach and a nectarine. This is the peach tree and how pretty is that? We get to wake up every morning and see that. That's almost as nice as having the fruit on there. We haven't got any fruit. These are probably about three and a half years old. And once again, like all these trees, I need to prune this mess out of the middle. It's definitely sucking some of the life and growth out of this tree, but that tree is beautiful. And down here, the nectarine, not quite as pretty, but still we've got some growth on that. So there's our little orchard. We'd love to add to it here and there, um, but we're excited that we have that and it's growing. Um, looks like most of these apple trees, this is a honey crisp, it's still got some life to it. But uh, I think that one was a Granny Smith. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, we'll just be happy to get some fruit. But the other cool thing that we've done the last two years is grow some tulips. Let's jump up here and check out our tulip beds. Okay, guys, for the last two years, we have grown tulips here in our garden beds. We have picked most of these already. They are in the fridge waiting for orders to come. Uh, some of these we just let flower out and enjoy them ourselves. You can see once once they open, they do not last very long. So you kind of want to pick them if you're selling them while they're closed and you can put them in your fridge. We are not experts by any means, but the tulips are quite easy to grow and very enjoyable. So we do sell a couple, but mostly we enjoy them for ourselves. There's over a thousand tulips between these two beds. This one's harvested mostly. And then we've got these ones here. But uh, this is just one of the few things that we grow that we do enjoy to grow and harvest. And a couple people will come out and get these from us. Like right here, you see this one that has not opened up yet. We could harvest that one, keep it in the fridge, and it will last quite a while. They're quite an amazing flower. I know there's plenty of people that mo know more about tulips than I do. But our little bit of knowledge, we've been able to enjoy them quite a bit. So if you're looking for something that is easy to grow beautiful it lasts a long time i would suggest planting some tulips so for the most part we do not have green thumbs but there are a few things that we do enjoy growing and they grow pretty well some of jamie's other flowers are popping up i have no clue what they are she remembers but we will have some more flowers that we can enjoy here later in the season so those are a couple things we like to do before the vegetables start coming in uncle ken and i were getting the pig barn ready for piglets here let's go in and check out what we've added and fixed and maintained on the pig barn all right guys it is about piglet time we're looking middle to end of april um, we're hoping for some piglets but just over the years the pigs have rooted pulled this dirt away so uncle ken and myself went and filled in all the low spots just so there's no gaps for these piglets to get out potentially. Um, so that has been nice, but inside, we had to do that all the way around. Inside, we have really made a difference. That's just for me, not getting things done and put away where it needs to be, but Uncle Ken's helped get this cleaned out, organized. Um, nice little storage space. We've got the fans for when it gets hot. Um, you can also see where we've added dirt around the insides. Uh, pretty much all of them needed it to be built up and I'm sure it will get taken down again. The last thing that we did, we got these fans hanging up. So we can open up the doors when it gets hot in here and uh, we can tilt these down onto the pigs if they need it on these pens or we just tilt them up and just get a good cross breeze. But we are getting set for piglets. So we'll go around and check out some of the other piglets. The last, oh, the other thing, forgot. This was potentially going to be our chick brooder area when we built this barn. But if you guys remember way back, 
This did not contain the chickens very well. We had to put boxes in here. Rats got in here and it was not a good situation. So we're opening this up. If you remember, we had seven, eight pigs. Eight pigs was put in for breeding. So we needed eight stalls. We've only got six, three on each side here. And we're gonna use this for a seventh. And then we've got a pallet shelter that we're going to use. So we're gonna open this door up and we're gonna use this for another pig and piglets. Um, also, we've got a charger. Normally we use the solar chargers for this area, but we figured since we've got electricity out here and we're always gonna have pigs in here, we might as well get something permanent. So we've got a permanent charger that we're gonna be able to charge all the fences with while these pigs are in here and uh, just excited. So a little spring cleaning goes a long way. The barn looks great. These are extra fans for the other pens. Last year we were putting fans in with them, so we have enough fans that if it gets hot enough, um, all the pigs have some air flow that we can get on them. But normally it's not too bad, but if it does get to that point, they're, they're taken care of. So there's the barn. Just checked this out the other day again. Big thanks to our friend Tyler. Got us this KC Farm sign, and it's been hanging out here ever since he got it for us. So. Real quick, let's run around, check out some of the pregnant pigs. If you have not seen earlier videos, some of them we are not sure took, but that is okay. Let's go check out some of the ones that we know for sure are gonna be having babies here shortly. All right, well, not all the ones we know for sure, but our potential ones right across from the barn, we've got Tuck, Dandelion, and Millie. And if you guys remember Millie, we saw her getting bred again, so she did not take that first time. And here is Dandelion, and she's not showing, showing too much signs of pregnancy. She's not beginning to swell. She doesn't have a milk line here, so this pen might not have any piglets, but that's okay. Let's head to the next one. All right, this next pen with Ryder and Smitten in it, this is a for sure. She's gonna be heading to the barn. Hey, bud, you telling everybody hi? You glad you got that pool in here, aren't you? So here is Smitten, we've showed her before, but she continues to get bigger and bigger. And we wanna see your belly. Bigger and bigger, she is just about sagging on the ground there. So she is a for sure for us gonna have some piglets excited about that <laughs> we really are starting to like these high white pigs we've got a lot of them with Millie I'm sorry not Millie but uh, hey trying to talk here guys we got we've got smitten we've got uh, willow willow bean just really like some of these high whites so excited to see what they're going to produce she is starting to get that milk line underneath and she is just swollen so there is a for sure going to be in the farrowing barn soon. All right, heading back all the way back to the back of our property. We've got Shiloh and we've got Mabel. We were excited. We were real excited about these, the two biggest pigs on our property. Shiloh's over here. This is big Mabel. Not sure about her. She's so big, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, we have not seen signs of her getting bred anymore but she's not really showing like some of the other ones so fingers crossed that uh, she has taken and has piglets in there and some of these are not going to be timed out normally when we put them in we've gotten lucky and they've had piglets around the same time the pigs come into heat every 21 days so if we put in a pig right after it got out of heat then we had to wait another 21 days until possibly bred so she might just not have taken the first cycle or might not have had a cycle until 21 days after we put her in there. So fingers crossed, maybe she'll have some piglets here this spring. So the rest of the pigs are on the other side of the property. Let's go check them out. I lied, there's one more on our property. I always forget about these two. Well, I never forget about them at feed time. They don't let me forget about them. But uh, we've got Delilah and Henry. Delilah, we are pretty sure there are babies in there. She's starting to show nicely. She's our smallest pig on the farm, but she's got such a good build. You can see she's blowing her coat a little bit here. Hey, Henry, how are you doing? It's a warm one, isn't it? 
So Delilah also will be heading into the farrowing barn here shortly. And now the last one, we moved these guys. I don't know if it was last video or the video before that, but they are enjoying this new spot with some pasture. And it is, let's see, Barb, Barb, Gordon, and Phil. How could I forget? And we're pretty sure the dad is Gordon, but they are laying down here. Seems like everyone's out enjoying the sun today. A little chilly this morning, but it's starting to heat up. Should be about 65 today. But uh, you can see they're right on the edge, <laughs> all piled up together. So we are pretty positive that Barb here, our black gilt, gilt because she hasn't had piglets yet, pretty sure that she is pregnant as well. Barb, you're not gonna get up for us? You're not gonna get up for us? I don't blame you. But you can see starting to swell down here in her belly, getting a little, Gordon, nobody can see with your big old head there. But those are the ones that we have put together into groups, into, for pairings. Not sure all of them will have piglets this time around. That is okay. As always, we're just hoping for healthy piglets. Phil, you wanna say hi real quick? Not so much. Get my big old shadow out of there. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Oh, you want me to scratch that belly? Yeah. Well, you're soaking wet, so I'm not going to scratch your belly. But anyway, guys, definitely feel like spring is here. We've got that one more cold spell. I feel like Tennessee's got 49 different winters. Dogwood winter, blackberry winter, this and that winter. But we're hoping that they're gone. We'll get the chickens out on the grass we've got another batch of chickens coming next week and we will be in full swing so it's an exciting time of year everything's starting to bloom you close your eyes and open them and before you know it all the trees are budded out and green um, but just a beautiful time of year so glad uncle ken's down here to help us out again hope you're having a fantastic easter weekend don't forget to make the change we'll see you on the next video